Hey, welcome to Early Access. I'm your moderator, Chris, and I'm joined by Brian. Hey, I'm a computer. <laughs> Stop all the downloading. And, uh, and Jeremy. I need a soundboard. Jesus. Dude, every, everyone needs a soundboard we, in their life. We, uh, we got like five seconds into that, and he's already started using the soundboard. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, uh, <laughs> that's coming in a little hot. I was mixed that down. That, that is coming up. Yeah, that was a little hot. A little hot. Uh, so, what have you guys been playing? Or I could um, poke. I can poke the bear because I know Brian's been playing something. I, I've been playing. Been yeah, playing a lot of yeah, yeah, dude, I've been playing a lot of something. Brian, you start. You've been playing with your Johnson. I get it. You got to build up to it. Yeah. Why do we? Why do we build up to? It? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, ah, oh, Jesus, what have I been playing? Uh, I've been back on Civ Five. I, I dumped some time Jesus into Civ Christ. Five this week. I did a, uh, a domination victory as the United States, and I chose fascism as my ideology, so that was fun. So you played as Trump? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, dude. I, no, I played as American imperialism. And then, uh, what else have I done? I, I played, like, a very low-key amount of Fallout. We did some strong player unknown, but that's about it. Nothing really new to report. Try to get your girlfriend to play The Witness. How'd that go? She fucking hated it. Yeah, I bet. I thought she was going to really like it, because she is No, I knew she phone. would hate that. No, no, So, So hear me out. So she has an app for her phone that the puzzles are actually very similar to the puzzles in The Witness. They, it's like the line things where you, like, drag, um, <clears throat> you drag, like, the cursor across or whatever. But what she, so she liked those puzzles, but she didn't like that she had to walk around, like, as a guy to go to the puzzle. She thought it was, like, tedious. To be fair, I feel like a lot of people have a similar opinion on that. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of my opinion, but I also don't really <laughs> like the puzzles. That was a waste of $10. Yeah. I'm sure it's a lovely game. I'm just too stupid for puzzle games. That's it's, what I, really I don't know. I it, stick to RPGs. It's not for, just, it's not for me, man. I haven't, I haven't played it, but I know. I like just looking at it. It's the fact that they're line puzzles. That's what gets me. I just don't like puzzles. That's what I realized. Fuck puzzles. Well, no, you like Fuck Portal. Them. You like Portal. Um... I did, actually, I really liked Portal. I blew through Portal really fast. But Portal is like, they are just ex exceptionally well done. It's like the best puzzles. Physics puzzles. Yeah. No, dude, Tetris is the best puzzles. Everybody knows Right, have you played Portal? Um, I played a demo of it. Um, you would like it. It was on a shitty computer. It was really slow, which I feel like kind of ruins the whole Portal experience. I feel like it has to be running it full speed but uh yeah no i've played it a couple of times and it, it seems like it's something that that i would enjoy you would enjoy it just because it's, it is all physics based i think you i yeah, think portal yeah. 2 is better i think that most people kind of agree that the gameplay is better um because it's not just portals there's also like other shit that changes physics shit that makes you like bounce stuff that makes you run fast it's it's very smart yeah, yeah. no i mean it's it's classic i think i think that's one of those games that you know, people are going to be talking about down the road. This just in Portal Good. No, no, but like, <laughs> it's, I think that I think that that's like the original Super Mario Brothers. Like, it's something no, you're totally that, right. that kids are, our kids are going to. Well, I'm not going to have kids, but um, <laughs> likewise, I don't want that shit, man. Uh, but like, it's something that generations after us, I think, will be talking about. Is like when you talk about the late 2000s, as in the decade, right. the Portal was kind of where it was. Right. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people thought it. Well, still kind of do. They a lot of people consider Portal Two to be like one of the best games ever made. So, Portal Two is excellent. It is. Yeah, it is. Yo, do you great. do? Are we still cooking, Brian? Should I should I go or? Yeah, do you... dude. Why don't? Yeah, I'll go. I'll go last. All right. I think I have more. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna do a uh, a quick Doom review. Because uh, oh. uh, it's going to be Was it on the TI-84? No, 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 no. Doom 2016. Oh. Uh, oh. I played it on something slightly more powerful, Nintendo Switch, uh, just a little bit. It's That's actually, so it's, it's about as powerful <laughs> as a TI-84 Silver Edition. Um, no, I'll just, I'll, I'll do a quick review. I'll, I'm going to just start with a few caveats. I, uh, I played this on the Switch, like I said, but I'm not reviewing it as the Switch version. I'm just reviewing Doom. And I'll talk about what the Switch, uh, the the issues and or benefits that the Switch had, and uh, I'm not going to do the multiplayer because I don't care, and I feel like a lot of people don't care. Uh, anyways, it's really good right off the bat. You uh, 
you guys saw the first level. You you basically you wake up on or you you're revived, summoned, uh, spawned into a research facility on Mars, and you have to uh, basically just kill a lot of demons. There was a demonic invasion, and that's that's basically the game. Uh, I think uh, John Romero, who who directed and helped make the first Doom, said something about how like uh, it. Uh, Video games are like uh, a porn, like they need a story, but it doesn't have to be good. I don't know, something like that. Story's very weak, that's my point. Uh, gameplay is very good. It's uh, very fast-paced, lots of uh, lots of killing, lots of gore. Uh, they do an interesting thing with the shooting where like a lot of shooters nowadays, you kind of hide behind cover. Uh, Doom 2016, you actually get health pickups for getting up close and personal and doing like a melee kill so there's like a strong incentive to not hide and to uh to kind of rush in like if your health is low then you should instead of hiding because it's all based on drops and pickups you should be running in and trying to get that quick kill off uh and and if you're low on health you know you kill someone you'll get a, a lot of health and stuff like that uh really good and the the art style was really good the graphics are awesome it just it's a really nice looking game uh yeah, I would probably trend towards uh, 8.5 for Doom. It's probably where I'm going to land on it. Uh, it was really good. I'm just going to talk about the Switch issues that I had and Switch benefits. Uh, it was really awesome to play it on the go. It played fine on the go. It was really cool to see it on the go. Uh, the issue with it on the go is the resolution is definitely not 720. It's lower. And I wish it was a tad higher, or I wish they did something with the, the textures and figured out a way to make them look a little sharper, especially your gun. It's weird how low res they made the gun look, because that's what you look at 90% of the time. Uh, but docked, it looks awesome, and it does look really good and portable. The only other issue with uh, the Switch version was there's this audio bug that I feel like a lot of reviewers kind of left, did they underplayed it. Uh, the audio bug, at least once an hour, you'd get this like screeching noise and then all the audio would cut out until you reloaded the mission. Uh, I'm actually not sure if they've patched that yet, but you know, I got it probably three weeks after its launch and I, I made a Reddit post about it and I think like I got three dozen comments and everyone agreed that it was way more persistent than a lot of people uh, who were reviewing the game said. It was like once or twice the entire game. So that was a bummer. but. Uh, if you play it anywhere else, you shouldn't have that problem. And it wasn't that bad, it just, it did suck. But, yeah. Doomed up. The Switch giveth and the Switch taketh away. Yeah, I mean, it was still really rock solid. I didn't have, like, and, I mean, there are much more unforgiving bugs. Like, all you had to do is reload the game. It takes, like, 20 seconds, uh, and then you're good for another hour or so. But, it, yeah, it's annoying, for sure. Um, so you would say that in this case the switch giveth more than it taketh away. Yeah, no, in this case, like, yeah, and that is kind of like the last point. Like, the switch is by far the most inferior version. You know, it's the the low. It's it's running below low settings on PC. It's running 720p docked and much lower undocked, and it's running at 30 frames a second. But the trade-off to all that is you get to play it on the go. So if that matters to you get the Switch version. It, it, and if that doesn't matter to you, get literally any other version. But the trade-off to that is you get to play it on the toilet. Yeah, I mean, for me it was worth it, because, yeah, I... <laughs> you wanted to play Doom on the toilet? I wanted, well, I wanted to play Doom on the go, so... Dude, he's a fucking American, okay? Yeah. All right, Brian. All, about. all right. All right. All right, all right. So, um... I took advantage of the of the Steam holiday sale or the winter sale or whatever the hell they called it. Um, I picked up. I think we actually all have this now. Uh, left four and left. Well, I call it <laughs> left five dead because that's the only logical thing to call it. But the technical name is left four dead two, I guess. Um, so we all got that now. That's. Um, I, we were talking about it the other day, Chris. It, it still retains like all of its playability. Yeah. You know, back when it back when it first came out, it's still really hard. Um, what's really kind of funny about that is the first 
like impressions of the original Left 4 Dead was it was really short. Like you could run through it in like two hours because there were only four campaigns. But like we were saying, like the replayability on all of those is just ridiculous. Yeah, it's different every time you the, play it. Yeah, now. the AI is so dynamic. And they were really, excuse me, they were really one of the first games to do that, weren't they? Well, I mean... With the AI being as dynamic as it, as it is. Yeah, per, more or less, yeah. Uh, so that that's good. Um, I imagine we'll probably be playing that at, at some point in the future. When we can um, stop playing PUBG for... Yeah, we can stop playing <laughs> PUBG. Um, I also picked up Civ Five, played that for the first Yo, time today. Oh, hey! Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was for seven dollars and eighty nine cents, or whatever I got it for. Um, I'm more than happy uh, with it. Um, I think I mentioned that I played Free Civ, which was like an open source version of Civ Two yeah. or Three, um, and that was kind of just a hot mess. You really wanted to like that game, but the UI was just so clunky and bad. Uh, that it was pretty much unplayable. This is, I guess, what you'd expect for a game that you actually pay for. Um, not to say <laughs> that open source stuff is bad, but you just kind of got to struggle with it uh, a little bit more than you do with expect jank. Open source. Right, right. And, and sometimes you're pleasantly surprised. But um, the big headliner, I guess, for me was I actually bought, I spent the 40 bucks and I bought Cold Waters. Um, and Actually, I, I I think that I anticipated it to be something that it wasn't going to be. If you're looking for a game that has like really good graphics and is it looks like up to date, this really is not that. But it's also completely not what the game's about. Um, it is one of those games that you you pick it up and you're like, oh, okay, I'll I'll play a couple of missions, and then you figure out, oh, gee, it's two o'clock in the morning and. I've been playing this for the past six hours now. Um, basically, you get a... Uh, it's the campaign that I've played through so far. It's 1983, I think. And the Soviet Union has the U.S. and NATO and uh, a couple of the, the countries on the border uh, with the Eastern Bloc. And you have to find a variety of targets. You have to carry out you know, whatever campaign they tell you to do, but it's all portrayed in this sort of overworld um, that's like the North Sea and, and the area just off of the Soviet Union. And targets pop up, but you don't know if the target that you're hunting or that you run into is the target that you're actually <coughs> um, So you can do essentially what I did, which is my first mission, I said, oh, it's a, you're looking for surface ships, there's the so I went right... I popped up and it turned out it was like three anti-submarine frigates and I got <laughs> blown up within two minutes. And that was the first run that I had in the game. So it is one of those it, one of those games that it's got a very steep learning curve. Um, I'm not pretending that I know how to play it. Um, it's got a lot more complexity to it than, than I've been able to figure out over the past few hours playing it. Uh, that being said, I think that it gives it that it's not really the same as, as Left 4 Dead and Left 5 Dead, but uh, it does have that sort of replay value where every time you engage, it's going to be you're still in a submarine fighting ships, but the circumstances are going to be a little bit different. Um, the the water, like you have to consider where the the water is warm because people can't hear you if you're below that section, and they can if they're above. So there's a lot of com complexity to it. There's a lot of uh, different parameters that change pretty much every time. Every campaign that I've played um, has been different so far. Um, yes. all, sounds, all so, in all, I, sorry, oh, sorry. No, I was going to say, it sounds like you can really keep coming back to it. Yeah, it, like I said, it's not, it's not a graphics game. It's not something that's going to look spectacular, excuse me, but um, I think if you're interested in that sort of period in history, these early days. Um, if you're interested in naval warfare, I had never played a submarine simulator. Um, and just from that, it's kind of interested me in a whole really didn't know too much about. Um, and, you know, ultimately, I think if you're 
looking up stuff that doesn't pertain to the salt, you know, looking up historical data about the submarine, whatever. Uh, if you're doing that after you get stress worth what you paid for. So I would say um, the price tag is high. If it sounds like something that interests you, pretty much everybody that's played it has said that this is the best one out there right now. Um, I haven't played any other sub simulators, like I said, but I was very impressed by this. Um, it was easy enough to pick up, um, but it has that complexity and that depth to it that you can keep playing it for hours and hours and hours part of it. Um, so, yeah, that, those, that's my thoughts. All right, lit fam. So uh, that was pretty good. I mean, it's a, it's a submarine game. And it's a submarine, yeah. so I don't yeah. know that lit would really be the right. The, but you know, it's cool. I I think so at least. Nice. Yeah, we got we we got some catching up to do. It's been it's been a while because we did like the game of the years last year. Oh, oh no, we actually we did reviews that. All right. Anyways, moving on. Went well. Uh, let's. Uh, Let's talk. Okay, do you, do you guys want to do Intel or Nintendo first? Let's do Nintendo. Let's yeah. build up to Intel. Yeah. All right, let's do Nintendo. Build up to Intel. Ah, oh, that hurts me, dude. <laughs> All right. So there is a uh, there's a Nintendo Direct rumor coming up. Uh, there's a couple of reasons why, uh, and then we'll we'll kind of talk about it. So there's a rumor Direct for a week from today, the 11th. Uh, I'm gonna act like it's happening based on these these rumors, uh, and then we'll 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 make some hopefully solid predictions, uh, and hopefully the my my warm up to it will will get you guys in a good spot for that. Uh, so the first bit of evidence are uh, there were 18 Amazon listings uh, that were taken down that were put up uh, very quickly. Didn't have any cover art or anything. It just had like the Switch logo. And uh, the description says something along the lines of, like, uh, from the Nintendo Switch Direct or something like that. Uh, 18 listings. Uh, some of them varied in price, but most of them were, like, the standard game price. Uh, the variance in price, they went up to, like, 100 bucks. That could be, like, a, a special edition or something. Uh, but 18 listings, which is a lot. But, um, yeah. So, we'll start there. Uh, the next thing is historic data. Uh, the last few years especially last year uh around the second week in january they've had a direct uh and that direct served a purpose of basically showing every game or every really big game that's going to come out for the rest of the year uh and give like a a basic roadmap for that year uh e3's purpose is to kind of flush out the holiday stuff um and I guess this year they, they did Metroid 4, which was a little further than the holidays. But there's there's some historic data behind this, and it worked really well for them last year uh, coming up on the Switch's launch. Uh, the last thing is there was an EA leak uh, where EA was supposed to premiere a game for the Switch. Uh, there was a roadmap of, uh, uh, of, their, of their documentation for it, and on that roadmap showed a January Direct where they would show it off for the Switch. Uh, so those are the uh, those are the that's the evidence we have. I'm gonna pre I'm gonna pretend that there's gonna be a Direct, and I'm gonna pretend that it's going to be big. This is usually their biggest event uh, next to E3. What is a Nintendo Direct? I don't I don't know what that is. So yeah, uh, around. I want to say 2014-ish, Nintendo stopped doing uh, E3 presentations in favor of these directs that they do intermittently throughout the year. And the purpose, oh, okay. yeah, the purpose so of the it's like the Apple. Yeah, it's it's like it's like yeah. a live, but it's it's more it's more like a live stream. It's not like it's not live usually. Like it's not like people getting up on a stage. It's it's like a pre-prepared stream, uh, and that's actually they. So at E3, they don't go up on a stage. They do a Nintendo direct. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. So this is this is like their biggest or second biggest direct of the year. So there's some rumors. Do you want me to do you want me to throw the rumors out, or do you want to throw predictions out? Spell out the rumors first. All right. And then we'll react. So a couple of rumors. Uh, and again, 
quick recap of last year's. Uh, they showed uh, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, their like launch trailer. And they announced that it was going to launch the same day as the Switch. They uh, showed off 1-2 Switch. They showed a trailer for Mario. They showed um, they showed off the Switch, obviously. And it was, it was basically like, this is when the Switch is coming out. This is what it's all about. So it was very, very Switch-focused. Uh, this year, uh, some of the rumors are, could be Pokemon. There's a confirmed Pokemon game in development. Uh, could be um, Metroid Prime 4. That's also confirmed in development. Uh, could be Animal Crossing. That's heavily rumored to be in development, mostly because of Pocket Camp and people kind of wanting it and people being confused about what this year is going to be for Nintendo. Uh, there's a Yoshi and Kirby game that are confirmed for this spring and early summer. Like a like a Yoshi and no Yoshi like a Yoshi Kirby game no Yoshi. okay no 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 <laughs> a Yoshi game a Kirby game are confirmed are yes they've already had trailers for those oh, okay the Kirby Air Ride for the two. Switch not Kirby Air Ride two uh, yes for the Switch Damn. um <laughs> they have uh, rumors for Smash Brothers as like a a fall kind of game and a lot of people are thinking that we might get Mario Odyssey DLC those are kind of I'd say the big big rumors. So, so, and one, one, more, one more quick piece. Uh, Nintendo claims that they, their, their projected sales goals for 2018 is 20 million Switches. So either they have some big stuff planned or they're dumb. Well, I mean, obviously they have big stuff planned. You don't launch a flagship console without, you know, having stuff in the pipeline for... Yeah. For, so, later on um a lot of people are concerned they kind of front-loaded by putting mario and zelda out in the first year well that's kind of what people expect though like if you were like we're gonna make a new nintendo console but there's only gonna be two titles on it what two franchises would you like to see it would probably be mario itself no yeah, yeah. i mean historically that doesn't they they don't do that though historically they don't launch on the same year. so uh, i mean that It, um, well, it clearly worked out for them this time. Like it, it, yeah, it's obviously right. front loaded, but it also seems to have worked. So, and and you have to look at it from the perspective of they're coming off of the Wii U. Yeah. Right. There's all this hype over the Xbox One and the the Xbox One S or whatever the hell the the other one is, and the PS4 and their version that does 4K. You know, if you look at it from Nintendo's standpoint, they are probably trying to make as big of a splash as they possibly can. Yeah. So, but but people are concerned that they don't have anything in the pipeline for 2018. So, what do you think is going to be shown at this direct? Should we start with most likely or least likely? Uh, most likely. Or just throw just just throw shit. Just out there. just throw it out. Throw it out. Right, throw it against right. the wall. We'll see what sticks. Pokemon or Smash, I think, will be most likely because those are really? their, those are their two biggest. Oh, dude, Smash is huge. No, yeah. but you Pokemon. think they're going to have uh, uh, like something for either of those games? Do you think gameplay footage or just even a teaser? Yeah, you know, like a teaser, teaser is in. It, it's coming this year. Like they they show a little a pre-rendered right. cutscene or pre-rendered trailer, and they say you know holiday 2018, and All then right, so E3 you come back and you see it. If they're talking, if they're already talking about, or if people are already talking about Animal Crossing and Yoshi, and y- Yoshi's already <laughs> coming out. That's Those confirmed. Those are secondary franchises. I agree. You know, like, I agree. You're gonna see. You're gonna well, see the stuff that's so making them money. Let, let's first. start. Yeah, let's start at the top down. Let's start at the at like the A tier franchises. Let's. So so you Brian thinks Pokemon or and or Smash. Right. And then yeah, I think that, and then. After that, is is there a Metroid game on it yet? Yeah, yeah, it's confirmed in development. Okay, okay, so that's not really news. I no, well, that would be, we we haven't seen anything from that. We haven't we seen, seen any. The words Metroid Prime Four is it's in development. Same with Pokemon. We've seen like a guy went up on on at E3 Pokemon and said less. he was like, yeah, we're we're doing it. Don't worry. There wasn't even a logo. He said like there will be a Pokemon game. Yeah. Well, I would expect that there would be, but. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to revise. I'll say, say Metroid or Pokemon will be the first one that you'll see. Interesting. Okay. Okay. 
All right. So, Chris, and when so, you said, when so you said it, Smash before, did you mean a port of Smash Four? Oh, it could be anything, dude. Title? Just uh, I'm open to I'm open to suggestions. But real quick, Brian, uh, yeah. are we are we talking gameplay for either of these, or are we just talking um, like this? You know, like little stupid t- like oh, it's coming, haha. I think that. I don't know, honestly. I think that I think that it depends on on how far along in in development they are. I, I think that it would probably be more likely, based on what you guys just said, that they, you'd see gameplay for Metroid over Pokemon. And I feel like I feel like Pokemon isn't really the kind of game that you care about gameplay in either, because it's. Oh, I think they're gonna try to really hype this one up. Right, but it's not. It's not like you don't care about the gameplay experience the same that you do in a platform. You know okay. I mean? Yeah. Um, so sure. I think that if you're if you're gonna see gameplay for one of those two, it's gonna be Metroid. I think Pokemon, you'll probably just get a like teaser. a tease. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking for the A tiers. I think Smash is gonna be their their kind of big game. They had Mar and I. Uh, I think it's gonna be a deluxe edition like Mario Kart Eight Deluxe on the Switch was. I think. Uh, Mario Kart 8 came out in 2017. I think 2018 is going to be Smash 4, uh, which was the Wii U slash 3DS version. And I think it's it's going to be as a good thing. I don't think people really need a Smash 5. The roster is 63 characters, and you could take uh, Smash, put all the DLC in it, put all the characters in, throw in all the 3DS stages because those are unique to that platform, which will you know all, not quite double your stage count, but it will really ramp it up. And uh, maybe throw in like one third party uh, and and three other first party characters. Just throw in a few extra characters and call it a day. That's what I think. I, I lost about ten seconds of that. Really? Yeah. All right. Uh, throw in some. You were saying throw in some third party characters, I assume. Yeah. Throw throw in uh, throw in a third party character. And uh, maybe a few first parties and call it a day. Make it like the ultimate smash, whatever. Ultimate smash. Well, the other th- what what do they have on the Switch that supports four person multi or four person local multiplayer? Mario Kart. So it's just Mario Kart. I mean, that's for for a first party. Right, but that's the feature that they've put in. That. Well, mostly two player because you split those Joy-Con and. If you were on the go, it would be two player. I don't know. Maybe I. I... So I think I no, think I don't want to revise. I, well, I was okay. Say Metroid and, and Pokemon. I think we're gonna get a Smash blowout, and I think we're gonna get a Metroid tease. With a, I think Smash is gonna be their summer game, and Metroid's gonna be the holiday game. So I think we're gonna get like a Smash like full reveal, be, mostly because it's you've already it's seen the game. Yeah, forward. you've already seen yeah. the game. And uh, Metroid, you're gonna get a, a, like a gameplay reveal at E3. But you didn't mention Animal Crossing. No, I don't think that's. I oh well, okay, I'm counting that as a B tier. Sorry. This is a, a, Animal Crossing <laughs> is like a B minus tier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It so is- so we'll get we'll get to that one. We'll get to if that. If memory one. serves, you thought Animal Crossing was gonna come out at fucking E3 or whatever. I did. I- I thought it well. I, I yeah, but I very strongly was pushing Metroid Four, and everyone was like, "Nah, dude." And then it happened. See, here's what I think about Animal Crossing. I think Animal Crossing, and this is this is just like a complete off the wall tangent. But I think that's going to be their their mobile crossover. I think that that's what they're going to be pushing um, their mobile game platform on because they're obviously in that market. They came out with Mario Run and a couple other. I mean, they already have Animal Crossing uh, on mobile. Yeah. Came out in November. Oh. oh. Which is why a lot of people are saying that the Switch version is going to come out. Because they, they, like, got a lot of people exposed to the IP. Well, and it would be, it would be interesting to see what they would do. And they could, yeah, they, you like could have some transfer. Yeah, you could integrate them. Yeah. 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 But I don't, I don't think, I agree with you. I don't think that that'll be, that's, that's down the pike you know <laughs> that's yeah. not something they're going to be spending time and effort they still don't have a pokemon game all right jay what do you think they have a pokemon game <laughs> um i'm gonna start with things that aren't gonna happen so animal crossing is not gonna come out um pokemon is not gonna be announced is my prediction 
I well. think that I don't think they're very far in the process at all on Pokemon. I don't think they're far enough along to even announce it. And Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon came out relatively recently. Um, and since this is considered, it's not like going to be like a Pokemon Coliseum style deal. It's supposed to be like a mainline entry. So yeah. I think it's too soon after Pokemon Sun and Moon. And even just from a development standpoint, um, if they just finished those games relatively recently, I don't think they're ready to turn around a whole new well, title. It takes so, them longer than that, I think. Well, no, they, as of late, they've been doing every other year. Uh, but Pokemon they, or Ultra no, Moon and Ultra Sun are also basically enhanced versions of. No, that, that, that's what I mean, though. Like they, so usually they do. So like they did X and Y, and yeah. then the year after that they did uh, the remake of Gen Three, and then we got Sun and Moon, and now this year we get Ultra Sun Ultra Moon. So they do like an A tier game, like a new gen, a B tier game, an A tier game. See. I see what you're saying, but I think that the jump to the Switch is going to be a significant enough departure that it's going to take longer than just... I would tend to agree. only been out for a year. I don't, I don't think they've got the turnaround, and I don't think they're ready to announce, and I think that they're just going to keep that powder dry for later. Otherwise, they'd be, like, severely front-loaded. Like, I think mostly they're going to, like, take it kind of easy this year. I think they were front-loaded, and this will be a little bit leaner in terms... Not necessarily leaner in terms of total first-party titles, but, like in terms of, you know, really flagship titles. I think in terms of really major stuff, the most likely thing would be, uh, like, a Metroid Prime teaser. No gameplay. Just, like, a, a very brief teaser thing. Um, and, yeah, maybe it could come out at the end of the year. Um, Smash? I think, Smash Brothers? I think, that, I think that was a relatively good two, two guesses. Um, my, my question is just, do they go in that direction, which could happen? Like, if I'm Nintendo, that's not a bad idea, especially... We have the evidence they did it with Mario Kart. Um, what was the timeline on uh, Mario Kart 8 v like versus Smash? When did Mario Kart 8 come out originally versus when Smash 4 came out? Uh, they they were both fair. So I was in. It was um, 2014 was when Smash came out holiday. So Smash has been out for coming up on Sometime. four years. Yeah, and um, Mario Kart was before that. So, really? uh, so yeah. So we're looking at about a four-year gap between each one, if Wait. assuming Smash Switch is legit. Yeah, um, yeah. time flies. It, I guess it's possible. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna vote no on Smash Switch Megaport. I think if we were to see that, it would be more. I think what's more likely is maybe they do announce the um, the online store. And you oh, the Virtual Console. Yeah, I think that's I think that's more likely than a, than a Smash Deluxe. I think Smash Deluxe is not unlikely. Likely, I think that's a good guess, but I think that they are probably at this juncture more likely to go down that road, because I think that there probably is a Smash game in development, and I think that they're probably looking at putting it out sooner than another four years from now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think that's maybe two years away. All right, fair enough. Timetable. Uh, so okay, so uh, B B B tier. Uh, stuff real quick. Uh, I'm going to say we're definitely going to get some Fire Emblem footage. I think we're going to get footage of Fire Emblem um, in some capacity. Mostly because when they announced that it was in development for the Switch, that was almost a year ago. That was 11 months ago. So I think it's time for them to kind of blow it out a little bit. Um, and that's, I mean, that's really all I can think of right now for for B tier. So I think that the three big games that they're going to push are uh, Fire Emblem, Smash Brothers, and uh, Metroid with uh, we and we already know that Kirby and Yoshi are coming out and then you know the other stuff will come. But I think that's what we're looking at. I maintain that if it's a Kirby game and it's not Kirby or Ride, I don't want to play it. And Fair I, enough. Dude, we all maintain. Yeah, dude, I think I think we all maintain. Let's <laughs> see Kirby Air Ride 2 and, you know, stop stop fucking us around, Nintendo. I, Why you gotta play us like... I already gave him the fucking title, Kirby Space Ride. It's 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 like Air Ride, but in space. It's ready to it's go. How does he breathe in space? Through his <laughs> Kirby. Through his Kirby, yeah. Through I mean, he doesn't really have a... Does he, or do they just uh, like have a binary fission? Like, how does I think they binary fission? Yeah. Wow. That'd be my sure. guess. Well, he would have trouble breathing in space. Though. Yeah. 
He would, for sure. Unless he sucks something up. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, any last thoughts on the Bendo? Are we ready for the Intel hacks? Hacks? Hacks, dude? Oh, shit, dude. I think we're ready for the hacks. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Brian, are you, are you familiar with this? No, I'm not. I oh, this is juicy. Oh, man. Cyber, this is juicy. Cyber espionage. This is juicy, man. This is juicy. Man. This is juicy. Okay. So, uh, fairly recently, this was kind of broken to the public. Intel's confirmed this. There's patches coming uh, next week, early. So this is this is very legit. This isn't like a, a rumor or anything. Uh, essentially, the uh, the kernel is compromised on all x86 Intel CPUs. Uh, oh, to, that's fucking fantastic. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the so so the the bad news. Is it is a hard? It, he's, he loves it. <laughs> the bad news. <laughs> the bad news is it's a it's a hardware problem. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, the moderately good news is that, uh, like I said, patches are coming that will fix that. The extra extra bad news is the patch will throttle your Intel CPU's performance by up to thirty percent. Oh fuck! So, uh, and there's nothing that they can do so... about this. So uh, there's there's a few options here, really. Uh, we're gonna get these patches. Everyone's CPU is gonna be throttled up to thirty percent. Uh, people are going to lose their goddamn minds. Uh, you, and everyone's gonna buy AMD CPUs. Yeah, uh, the stock. If you look at the stocks, <laughs> AMD's shot up, Intel shot down. Uh, but this is a big deal. They have eighty percent of the market share, and x eighty six architecture goes back ten years. So well, the, the other thing is, like, you go in a you go in a like a business, and they're almost all Intel computers. Yeah, you it, very rarely see yeah. the AMD processors in industry. So uh, that's a big fucking deal. Dude. So yeah, this is a big fucking deal. So uh, I don't know. Like this is this is like are they, they can't do a recall because it would be it every would be CPU ever. They instantly bankrupt themselves. Yeah. yeah, they can't do a recall. There's definitely going to be a giant class action lawsuit, right? Like, there has to be. Yeah. yeah but how, how would you... I don't know how you'd sue them for... Well, you you bought something with a with an expected performance, and it was throttled, I mean. Yeah, that's that's true. That's... I want to say... Really, it's similar to Apple's class action lawsuit right now in France. You can, you can figure out how to print... 8 billion transistors on a piece of silicon that's an inch and a half by an inch and a half but you can't figure out how to make it work without killing 30% of my performance. Although if it's a hardware thing Yeah, it's a hardware issue, so the software fix is essentially like brute forcing a fix. It's like uh, I guess the issue is uh, the vulnerability of the kernel allows you to just, which the, the kernel is like uh, a step between like the metal being the CPU and like the operating system so that's like how they talk and the the exploit allows you to read anything in the kernel and that shit's not encrypted so any like this is keystroke this is anything like yeah, password it doesn't matter what you're doing yeah. on the other so side, in there. i think the patch at an os level is basically just like encrypting everything which means your cpu is encrypting it encrypting it's it's constantly yeah it's going to have to be so i think that's why it's such a big hit because it's it's a software fix. It's just constantly gonna be. Well, the other thing is if you're if you're putting that much load on the CPU that it's slowing down by thirty percent, what is that gonna do for its lifespan? Yeah, uh, I yeah. How much is it gonna shorten it to have that extra workload on it? Because I'm. Uh, <coughs> this is this is bad. <laughs> yeah, no, dude. I was all like, I, I used to talk shit about AMD pretty hard. Well, I'll have Ryzen you. soon. I'm looking, I'm looking at you, yeah. <laughs> but I don't. Oh. It's like, no good. It's 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 kind done, of should have, should have done an AMD build. I knew it. I knew it. It's nuts that uh, you know next sometime next week we could all update our PCs and I'm not thirty percent is the worst case, but like you you run an update and like that's worse than going to Windows eight. That's worse than going to Windows eight, dude. Yeah, no, for real. I, that's fucking terrible. And the other thing is that um, you didn't mention this that uh, the night or uh, the like last night or whatever right before the oh, yeah. public. Oh yeah. This is bad. The fucking the, it was either the fucking CEO 
Yeah, uh, he's he, yeah. I think he's a CEO. He's either the he's some very very high level. He's an ex- he's a C level executive at it. So. Yeah, he's a really fucking high level executive, and he sold all his fucking stock. Yeah, right before uh, it went public uh, and tanked. He's like you like, do, dude. That's like you First do. Of all, he's hopefully going to jail. <laughs> he probably jail. won't. <laughs> Realistically, he probably just won't. Like... Just because we don't arrest rich people, but um, it would be no, nice if he did. They'll put him in the cell with Martha Stewart. Him and Martha, they'll be hanging out in there for training. I fucking hope so. But um, Martha Stewart has a great show with Snoop. Is she still in jail? No, she's not, she has a TV show with Snoop Dogg. It's awesome. Oh shit, I forgot about that. Yeah, dude, I've you gotta that watch before. that. It's fucking great. I, I, no, dude, I've seen it. I, I agree. It's, it's excellent. Because because she's fucking been to jail and he hasn't. They talk about it a lot. Um, but, um, uh, uh, what was I gonna say? But so what they're gonna, I mean, what they're gonna have to try and prove in the class action lawsuit is that... They Jeremy, are, he's already they, there. He's like, there's a class action lawsuit. He's like, this is it. Well, no, but that's gonna be the whole question. They're not, you can't sue, or I don't think you can make probably a great case on like you had a manufacturing error, you know what I mean? I don't think- It's not a manufacturing error. It's an architecture problem. Yeah, it's It's a design problem. But my my point is you can't come after them and say like, oh, there was a mistake, so. But but if you can prove that they knew that there was an error and they continue to make them that way, they can, they maintain the same architecture. Um, They, you know, we're selling them under these. That's where you can come in with the truth and advertise. So, So there are rumors that they actually to some extent may have known to some degree that this was happening and they were they like, did it fucking yeah, you knew. well like, they we knew to some extent that no, you, you knew they, no so so the i mean the rumor is that they were doing this potentially to enhance performance like part of the compromises that were made in design uh from this perspective would enhance performance uh i don't know it's not good i just i don't uh, so in again five percent is the minimal uh impact 30 percent is the max that's a lot five percent five percent is a lot so no i was just thinking like i i have a 3.2 gigahertz processor right now uh 30 percent that's 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 a two two gigahertz and change processor that's that's a 30 percent cut that's huge well, beyond, I mean, beyond that, like, it, that's just, that's nuts that that's, like, when you hear 33%, you're like, yeah, that's a lot. But then when you actually think of your, like, core clock and you cut it, you're like, damn, that's a lot. Well, and it's not even that bad because if it was really that much of a problem for us, our CPUs are all socketed. We could just change them. Well, you yeah, but a, you're stuck on uh, you're stuck on Intel with your motherboard, dude. right? But if I'm saying if they came out with something that didn't have this vulnerability, you could go out and buy that processor and put it into your computer. You know that that actually might be the best fix, where they give you they they launch like a, a new a quick fix generation, like uh, like a ninety six or a nine thousand series because they're on the eight thousand series, but they launch it very quick. It's not a huge improvement over anything. Maybe it's even not as good as the 8000 series. And if you bring in your X86 processor, you get a discount. Yeah, like a cash for clunkers kind of thing. Yeah, so if, if I bring in my 4000 series for the 9000 series, uh, maybe instead, you know, an i5 would be like $200. Maybe they'll knock it down to like 150 or 125 or, or something. 100. 100 would be, yeah. That. Yes, some version but, of that. But here's the problem. <laughs> If you have a laptop, your CPU is soldered onto the yeah. motherboard. Yeah, yeah, no, you're, yeah, this it's going to be a huge and then, mess. And yeah. so, yeah, and this is like a this is another thing. Like every single Apple computer has an Intel CPU. So well, supposedly Apple actually has already fixed this problem. Yes, but you still have the throttling. That's the issue. But supposedly, like I I didn't read this full story. You might have, Chris, but like I think that it had already been fixed on Apple. So like I think if it's being throttled, you've been living with the throttling, which I guess makes it a little better. Does it though? <laughs> it makes it a little better, yeah. I, I mean, like, I guess. Not like my computer's gonna get worse next week. It's like oh, my computer hasn't been as good as it. Could it's it's already gotten worse. Like it's... the other yeah. thing that I'm realizing is that like my CPU is. That's, it's a, like 70-80% most of the time when I'm playing games and shit, so... R.I.P. Yeah. Oh. Well, hopefully, and yeah, again, like, 
the patches aren't out. It was tested on Linux, and there's uh, there's benchmarks, but it's hard to say what's going to happen with uh, gaming and stuff. And uh, the throttling, uh, because of how we, uh, because of the like high level overview that we just did on it, where you're basically having to do some form of encryption on the fly, uh, doesn't necessarily. So so basically, what that implies is like the 8000 series CPUs that are more powerful. Are going to be closer to that five percent decrease because they're they can do it easier. Right. And the older your processor, the fewer cores, the lower the clock speed. Fuck. That's going to eat up. <laughs> That's such bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so no, I mean, it'll be fun. Fun. I'm sure we'll be talking about this next week. What I would say is, whatever fix they offer, do it as soon as you possibly can, because I can easily see this putting them out of business. I don't know about out of business, just because their market no, share is so dude, big. No, dude, like, the government uses, like, their market share is huge, and the government uses computers and stuff. Like, there are a lot of critical systems that depend on x86 processing. Right. Like, not something that, oh, my computer slowed down by 20%. Oh shit! The lights won't come on anymore right. because the station can't handle. And I mean that's unlikely, but I think that their market share is so big, they, there's really not a whole lot of room for them to escape this. You know what I'm saying? Well, the other thing is, even if it doesn't put them out of business, I remember I read probably two months ago about a third company considering entering the CPU market. If I'm remembering this right, um, that Chinese? at the <laughs> no, um, was it like I? I keep no, wanting to say Nvidia, but I don't think that's right. It was it was uh, like a company I was familiar with was considering entering the CPU market. Um, Apple can basically do it. Their CPUs but, on their iPhones are better than Intel's and AMD's in but, a lot of cases. Like this could present an opening, um, even if it's not necessarily for AMD. It could present an opening for a third entry. Yeah. No, I think it'll. I think you'll see the rise of some Chinese CPU manufacturer. You you Dude, look at by that. I mean, I no, think I mean, just just AMD like, flipping the fl just flipping the market share is more likely. That's also right, possible. But I, it, it's not going to just flip the market share like this is. No, like, yeah, but I I can see uh, you know AMD sales exploding shift, next year. It? Yeah. Oh yeah, AMD sales are going to go way up, way up, but there's still going to be a demand. And I the. China is, they're all over the tech stuff. They are right on it and they will be ready coming out with the the processors or whatever happens. They'll be ready to fill that void because they, they're right there. They have the production capacity to do it. Yeah. So Very I think awesome. that's what you'll see happen. Intel will be a, a third or fourth or fifth even in terms, of, in terms of market share and you'll see new companies probably from China or Korea, nor, uh, South Korea, uh, getting into this market. Uh, the other people, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Samsung wasn't going to get involved in this. Well, they so, usually source their chips. They're more into They displays. usually source their chips, but they're a huge memory manufacturer. So they, That's they, true. They already, yeah. they already have some experience in, in this kind of thing. And they you want to talk about market share, Samsung, Samsung's got huge market share. That is true. Apple could easily, even if they don't uh, go for like a con like a consumer oriented chip, they could easily do a proprietary chip for Apple computers. Well, I was gonna say, yeah, like Apple could That's just very Apple like anyways. they could ditch like they the the power PCs, you know, that was unusual until they switched to Intel. They could switch back to their own Apple CPU, and like I said, they're a lot of times they're. I mean, uh, iPhones are now basically outperforming yeah. MacBook Airs. Uh, which, you know, that's an Intel chip. So, yeah, that's fun. Uh, all right. Uh, any closing thoughts on that? Or I think we I think we covered it pretty hard. Nice. Nice. Uh, okay. Cool. <laughs> Um, Brian, do you have anything to, to say? From all of us here at the Cohesive Friendship <laughs> Unit, uh, wishing you and yours. Have an, and wishing you and yours a very happy. Stay crispy, guys. Stay crispy. Stay crispy.